Western Samoa pulled out all the stops as Apia hosted the International Polynesian Canoe Federation's World Sprint Championships. Paddlers from around the world brave the gloomy weather in a spirit of international competition. And the event began with a canoe blessing ceremony, a unique beginning to a world sporting event. Originally, the sprints were supposed to be hosted by Western Samoa in 1996. Last year, the International Polynesian Canoe Federation brought the world sprints forward two years. It was a mammoth task to organize, but it happened. And then it rained. The 2,000 paddlers from around the world will remember the rain at the sixth world sprint. But most of all, they'll remember race time. spectators flock to the capital each day. We had very heavy rains on Sunday during our uh, canoe blessing ceremony and then of course again on Monday uh, but that didn't dampen our spirits. We've been preparing for this thing far too long. We've worked far too hard and uh, you know to to allow uh, wet weather to uh, to phase us. Bula Fiji! It's not just about paddling and winning. I think it's about sportsmanship and really getting to meet people and doing your best. What's your special diet? Um, <laughs> when I go somewhere, I always go for gold. And uh, cross my finger. It's an exciting sport, um, and it's a great way of getting back into your heritage. Yeah, it's really good. The nicest people you could wish to meet anywhere. The local people that come out and support us are just very friendly, and they cheer for everybody. It makes you all feel important. But you still want to beat them. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're here for. They paddled in 30 events in heats over five days to choose the finalists. The outriggers are identical in each event and come in different combinations. Here we have the DC-12 or 12-man canoe. That's two canoes lashed together. And the most popular is the OC-6, the six-man canoe. Balance and strength are needed for the OC-1, the one-man canoe. New Zealand last attended the championships at Sacramento. Alex, you went to Sacramento and now you're here in Western Samoa. How is this event different? The biggest difference in, the, in this event, it's, it's in the, in the uh, true heart of the Pacific in the islands. Uh, you have a natural harbour, the ocean there. You're competing in Tangaroa's uh, garden, as, as we say. And um, we have a bigger number of, of New Zealanders competing, 191 paddlers, in fact. And what does this event mean for your association? It's the bringing together of the Pacific families, uh, sharing cultures, sharing sporting uh, differences, and getting more people involved in our sport. And the sport is attracting worldwide interest. Its roots, however, are firmly in the Pacific. And the undisputed champions are the Tahitians. They've dominated the sport internationally since 1981. And the club most feared is Fa'a. I have a team very together. Last year we won Molokai race. What's uh, the secret of your success? Well, it's uh, 30 years in canoeing. That's the secret. You cannot be a good paddler if you don't start uh, very young, you know. So all the sports that I have in control, they start 10 years ago. And I formed them physically, mentally, and especially the stroke. So that's why they are good. The Cook Islands sent a small team and an enthusiastic support group. It's 
only about five or six, there's five or six experienced members in my team, and the rest is the first time for them uh, paddling. We've, we've come over here for experience, uh, you know, techniques just to see what what, um, what they're doing, you know, how the, how the techniques are, what, what kind of paddles they've got, the canoes, the singles, singles canoes and the sixes. The Cook Islands share their inexperience in outrigger racing with other participating clubs like Western Samoa's Atafa Canoe Club. Most of their members are under the age of 19. Traditional canoe carving was another attraction for the youth. The young people will see living examples of craftsmen producing seaworthy canoes. And I think this will be a tremendous uh, boost to the young people who, many of them, in, especially in Apia, they don't see the canoes being built anymore. The organizers of the display made the carving of the canoes a competition. The craftsmen had only two and a half days to transform the logs into fine pow pow. It was an opportunity for younger carvers to learn the skill by observation. When they were completed, the canoes were appraised and judged, and finally, they were auctioned on the final day of the races. The winning canoe fetched 2,300 Samoan Tala. With just one year to prepare for the event, it was a steep learning curve for Masu Sui J.R. Pereira. One thing I've learned is that uh, the organization is not easy. Getting the funding is not easy, as of now I'm still trying to look for fund, funds to meet the shortfall. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we really have also to develop uh, the sport internationally. What I mean is the likes of uh, the Commonwealth Games and the Olympics. And the overall picture, how has it been? I'm quite happy personally uh, that uh, I think uh, uh, I can see that it's quite a successful uh, sprint, viewing the, the limited resources with Samoa, but we have managed to pull it through. It's a new sport for Western Samoa. The Western Samoa Canoe Association was only established in 1987 after a gift of four canoes from Tahiti. The five Western Samoan canoe clubs grew from a club called Va'ai Lau Foy, Watch Your Paddle, which is still a local favorite. Some of the clubs, like Atafa, were only established last year. Given their relative inexperience, the local clubs are quietly confident. Our chance is about 100% to win the, the race. You're going to win the race? Of course, of course. I think we win tomorrow because if, if we qualify today at the semi-final, and then we have a chance for us to compete tomorrow at the final. For my junior um, team, under 19 women's, they've come in first in the 500 meter race they've also come in first in the 1000 meter race and they've come in first overall in their in their division there's no doubt that the samoan teams are gifted their starts are always powerful but training resources are the problem a problem shared by other pacific island countries in 1986 we have a couple of canoes donated to us from tahiti six-man canoes and that's all we had. And we've been training in those since then. And uh, the, the problem is uh, we cannot uh, interest more paddlers to come because when there's people on the two canoes, you wait for your turn, you don't get it, you never come back. We've come into, this, uh, into these world sprints with, not with, with high hopes. And that is because up until now, we've only had four canoes uh, that uh, our many teams have used to, to, to train on. 
I believe that from this day on, Samoa is going to be a major force in this sport. One group that had no resources but found assistance from Levine, their mayor, Sir Barry Curtis, and the Lotteries Commission was Mulivai Fangatoloa from Otara. In a touching story, these young New Zealand-born Samoans kissed the ground when they arrived at Faleolo Airport. And what are their strengths? They believe in themselves. They've got the spirit there, the determination to go for the best. And I hope we've got those medals to them. Try hard for our team from New Zealand. And that's what everybody was trying to do at the semi-finals. Some clear favourites were emerging. There were no surprises with Tahiti and Hawaii, but there were some dark horses from Aotearoa. Some of the Kiwis, however, were surprised on the turns as the Kaitaia Dolphins found out as they paddled into the Pacific. When you knew you'd lost it, what did you do? Cried. No, we <laughs> Well, I think we, we felt we'd lost it on the turn when we tipped over, um, when we were in the water, so um, we actually had a bit of an unfortunate mishap there. Samoa, Samoa. Woo! The Dolphins team, they're really keen. We're heading over to Samoa, Samoa. This is the day everybody's been waiting for and thank goodness it's fine. With 32 events involving hundreds of paddlers, the World Sprints Finals begin.
Hey, good on you, Mulivai. And now here's how the medal stacked up. For the first time, Tahiti was seriously challenged. The World Sprints Championships were won jointly by New Zealand and Tahiti, followed by Hawaii and Canada, and the next Sprints Champs will be held in New Caledonia. Now he's... He's the granddaddy of them all. I think uh, in my terms, this is a, a Super Bowl. Stirring stuff, and so was the haka from the other team from New Zealand, Wainui. And with that, the 75 crews made their way to the water. We're going in confident, but, you know, we want to be anxious. It's the word, anxious. Where's the puppy? A fast start, vital. Close to the shore, everything was going to plan for New Zealand, as they quickly grabbed the lead, leaving the traffic in their wake. The Australians were rammed and lost ground, and the Tahitians were caught up in the log jam. The huge fleet of chase boats and supporters were locked in a high-speed dash of their own. Even keeping an eye on the Kiwis was Tracy, one of Hawaii's top exotic dancers. The initial sprint along the coastline to Laal Point offered the New Zealand side the flat water they thrived in back home. After half an hour, the crew's bed left into Kaiwi Channel, and the Tahitians, who had recovered smartly, accelerated clear. New Zealand and Australia, which had won the race the past two years, were virtually match racing. It might be 74 kilometres, but there was no let up. Auckland's Lake Papuki was never like this. New Zealand pulled its first crew change, and they didn't miss a beat. World junior outrigger champ Maui Kelson and Olympic kayaking great Paul McDonald clambered aboard the chase boat. The Australians had combined the winning crews from the previous two bancos and were really pushing hard. But spurred on by specialist outrigger paddler Ricky Nuu, the Kiwis responded. No one could match the encouragement of reserve crewman Lance Gilbertson. That's the way, that's the way, Lance! The team could hear the Northland firefighter all right, but the Aussies had powered out of earshot. Another crew change, a procedure that could now be repeated every 12 minutes. I was just in for um, 24 minutes and you really you need that, that first effort to burn your body in and I, I progressively get faster now from now on. To the left, one of the top Hawaiian entries, Lanakai, was challenging for third. Then, disaster. New Zealand tipped. The Hawaiians call it a huli. Calmly, the changeover was brought forward, and a swift recovery saw them lose probably only half a minute. It was time to play catch-up, with the team captains Paul McDonald and Mark Scheib moving to the front of the outrigger. Averaging eight miles an hour and switching the paddles every 16 or 17 strokes, they set out after the Australians. But at what cost? It's really exhausting. Two hours into the race, we're doing about 5% five, five off maximum the whole hog, so yes, yeah, she's pretty hard. They opted for a total New Zealand effort in the ocean swells, rather than ringing Hawaiian steerers like Tommy Connor, whose expert knowledge of the trade wind currents had enabled the Tahitians to tear away in their new space-age canoe, which they'd only sprung on the Kiwis the eve of the race. After the break, the pressure really goes on the steerers from the far north as the sprint develops into a marathon. Stick around as Mobile Sport wraps up the Canoe Classic and backseat boys steering the canoe 19 year old Maui Kelson who also makes the paddles and fellow Northlander Bo Herbert a dairy farmer who played rugby for North Auckland but Okara Park was never this treacherous nor downright demanding. Being sloppy and with a bit of wind around it sort of make, makes the canoe jump around a bit um, so you, what's happening now with the steerers is that you're basically on one side left hand side all the way The race was three hours old. Fresh tactics what we're doing required. At the is we're changing our course a little bit. We're heading towards Kago Point. We're aiming for a bit of calm water because we know that's our forte. These guys are racing kayak paddlers. They like the calm water. If we can get there before the other teams do, we've got a chance of pulling that lead back. Out of nowhere loomed Dana Point, the best of the Californian crews, which had won the lead-up Catalina outrigger race. 
As for the lead, the Tahitians were on course to break the record and give 48-year-old steersman Tommy Connor his 10th win. I gave him a few tips. You know, I went down there and trained with them um, in August and again in September and kind of fine-tuned them and showed them a few things that they didn't know about paddling the channel. Back to that battle for third. With so much ocean to play with, Cruz really came this close mid-race. The Americans dug it in and paddled away. The bid to catch up was hurting. Pretty shags. I'm starting to feel the cramps coming on now. Uh, Mate, it's going to take me out for a 24 minute spell. Hopefully I can get back in, really push it through to the finish. Mark Scheib's hands look shot. Dick Boyle's face said it all. But landfall was in sight, along with a clutch of supporters who'd headed out from Waikiki for a close-up look. A big crowd was on the beach to cheer home the victorious Tahitians, who slashed 11 minutes off the race record of five hours, six and a half minutes, to score their second win in 17 years, both times coached by Tahitian entertainer John Gabalu. All the country is waiting for this, and we were on the radio live sometime, every, every half an hour, and uh, we had a message from everywhere, all the paddlers, all the groups, whatever, from Tahiti. Around the one and only boy on the course, and New Zealand was heading for home. Although fifth, 20 minutes behind the Tahitians, the Tom would easily have won the race last year. But the paddlers weren't looking for excuses. It had been a learning experience, a real test of teamwork. The winners gave thanks, while our guys stretched out, largely too exhausted to celebrate. Well, I reckon it's not bad for a bunch of boys from Lake Pupuki. <laughs> In August of last year, Maui Kjeldsen travelled to compete at the World Outrigger Canoe Champs in Sacramento, USA. It was there that he won the title of World Junior OC1 Champion. OC1 stands for Outrigger Canoe you know, One, one person. I was competing in the um, junior men's single. I, I didn't have a team over there. And I had a heat semi and a final to go through. Well, in the final, I... Um, Oh, I just relaxed, you know, up to the start line. And I got a real good start, and I was ahead the whole way. I raced 500 metres, and personal best time of 2 minutes 19. I became <laughs> world champ, junior. It is real important to win to me. <laughs> I enjoy it. To be a good paddler, it's, you know, good to have long arms, and people that do a lot of weightlifting, and muscle, you know, bodybuilding and stuff, they don't do as good because they, you know, they're building up the wrong type of muscles from, you know, compared to different paddling. Paddling, you build longer, you know, muscles for a bit more endurance. Oh, yeah, he's put on lots of uh, upper body in the last five years. Uh, the, other, the other thing he does a lot of is surfing, and uh, that uses similar muscles in a slightly different way, and, and he's got a good body for surfing or paddling. It's got the natural paddler's body just developed from paddling. Maui will attend about eight regattas in a year. Since becoming world junior champ, this is the first national outrigger canoe champs Maui has attended. This is the first final of the senior men's <laughs> races. It's a 3,000 metre and it's got five turns in it. It's my favourite race. The techniques I use, I just try to um, you know, do long strokes and just keep it smooth. And it's an even start in the senior men's OC6 3,000 metre sprint. And that's Northland team Miti Matanga led by world junior singles champ Maui Keltsen. Into the second to last turn and strains are beginning to show. Miti Matanga digging deep to the corner. It gets to a stage where the pain goes away and you don't feel it anymore. Ah, oh, tragedy for Māori Kura as Tarawera finished winning by four seconds. I've just completed the first final of the day, which is uh, 3,000 in my team. We got second, we just got pipped at the line. They're Tarawera from um, Kaurau. We're quite happy with getting second to them because they got a silver medal at the World Sprints in Sacramento last year. The real focus and challenge for Maui today is the OC1 500 metre sprint. At 18, Maui qualifies as a junior, but will be competing in the senior men's open race. Oh, I just can't believe him, how, how committed he is and how serious he is about it. He, we go somewhere, and um, go to a party and there's no way that Maui drinks. He just, if he's in training, he doesn't drink, he doesn't, he doesn't smoke, he's never considered smoking. 
it's just been so so good for him yeah. when Maui's racing I well I just get just so excited I just remember him when he was a little boy running over the paddocks and <laughs> and seeing him now and just you know I just know that he can go as far as he wants to go well my main competitor is was the national champ from last year and the year before and he's um, his name is Rick New and there's another guy from the club that my dad started off his name is Bo Herbert He's a real good competitor too. My name's Rick New. I live in Kawaro down in the Bay of Plenty. Um, I've been out rigging since 1989. Um, I won the 1991 Men's Nationals single title. Um, in 1992, they ran out of time and the, the singles weren't contested that year. Um, and we're here today contesting the 93 singles. Yeah. The main competitors, um, Maui Kelston from uh, Mitsumitanga Club.